How to wallpaper a room. Wallpapering a room or a feature wall can make a stylish design statement in any home. Here we're going to show you how to hang, paste the wall and paste the paper wallpaper, as well as how to paper around obstacles. You'll find a full list of tools and materials you'll need at the end of this video. Before you begin, it's important that you thoroughly prepare the surface. See our online guide or leaflet for advice on planning and preparation and aftercare. Start by washing the surface with sugar soap and then leave to dry. If necessary, repair any holes with filler and then sand down to leave a smooth surface. Using a spirit level or a plumb line, mark a vertical line 500mm from your starting point. Measure the drop of your wall and add 100mm to allow for trimming. Then cut with wallpaper scissors. If you have a large pattern design, be mindful of where you want the pattern to be positioned on the wall and then add 100mm. Following the manufacturer's instructions, mix the paste the wall adhesive. Use a roller to apply the adhesive to the section of wall you're about to cover with your first piece of paper. Then, line up the paper to your guide mark and adjust the position of the wallpaper pattern as necessary. Working outwards from the center of the paper, use a brush or roller to smooth the surface, making sure you remove any bubbles as you go. Once the paper is smooth and in position, Trim the top and bottom with a retractable knife or trimming wheel. Repeat this measuring, cutting and pasting process and then butt the second piece of wallpaper up to the first, adjusting the position slightly to match the pattern if need be. Smooth the surface before trimming at the top and bottom, then use a seam roller to smooth the join between the two pieces of paper. Continue these steps until the wall is covered. When moving on to another wall, Repeat the process of using a spirit level or plumb line to line up the first drop accurately. For paste the paper wallpaper, start by preparing, measuring and cutting as outlined in the paste the wall instructions. Mix the wallpaper adhesive as directed and apply to the wallpaper with a pasting brush, working out from the middle to the edges. Then, fold over the wallpaper to create a concertina and following the manufacturer's guidelines, allow the paper to soak. To avoid adhesive getting onto the face of the next roll, be sure to clear up any excess paste from your pasting table. Then, hang the paper as described in the paste the wall section. When papering around corners, the method you'll use will depend on whether it's an internal or external corner. For internal corners, Measure the gap between the edge of the wallpaper and the corner from the top, middle and bottom, as most corners are not perfectly square. Add 25mm to the longest measurement and mark on the paper before cutting vertically. Hang the wallpaper and smooth it into and just beyond the corner and onto the next wall. If your wallpaper doesn't have a pattern, or the distance from your paper to the internal corner was more than half the width of a roll, then simply start the new wall with a full width of wallpaper. If the distance to the corner was less than half the width of the roll, mark the remaining distance that would be needed to complete the width of the roll, minus the 25mm overhang onto the next piece of paper and cut. This will help when pattern matching. Then, measure from the corner and mark the width of the paper you're using onto the next section of wall. Use a spirit level or plumb bob to mark the vertical line and align the edge of the wallpaper so it overlaps into the corner. Match any pattern at eye level as best you can. For an external corner, wrap the wallpaper around the corner and smooth. Then, measure and mark the width of your wallpaper onto the new wall. Use a plumb line or spirit level to create a vertical line to use as a guide. Pattern match as best as you can. When hanging wallpaper around the light switch or socket, it's key that you isolate the power to the switch whilst you work. Start by letting the wallpaper hang over the switch and use a pencil to lightly mark the position of the socket's corners onto the paper. Then, make a hole in the center of your four marks. Cut diagonally towards the marks, then trim, leaving only a small overlap. Use a screwdriver to loosen the screws on the socket so you can carefully feed it through the gap you've cut. 
Using a smoother, feed the wallpaper underneath the faceplate. Finally, replace and retighten the screws. If you need to paper around a radiator and are unable to remove it from the wall, turn it off and allow it to cool. Hang the wallpaper up to the radiator as before. Then cut it so that the paper overhangs the radiator by about 150 millimeters. Carefully feed the paper down behind the radiator and mark the position of the brackets onto the paper. Then, cut a slit in the bottom of the wallpaper to accommodate the brackets. Apply the adhesive and then carefully feed the paper behind the radiator, smoothing with a radiator roller as you go. If you have a gap between the radiator and skirting boards, cut a suitably sized section and secure as above. To paper around a door, hang the wallpaper as before but allow the paper to overhang. Smooth the paper up the door frame and then mark the top corner of the door onto the paper. Cut a diagonal line to the top corner of the door frame and trim the excess paper so you're left with an overhang of 60 mm. Using a brush or roller, smooth the wallpaper around the door frame. Trim the excess wallpaper with a retractable knife or trimming wheel. Once you've finished hanging your wallpaper, be sure to step back and admire your handiwork. Here is the list of tools you'll need to hang your wallpaper. And here are the materials you'll use. And this is the recommended safety equipment needed.